Uh, thank you all for coming. I'm John Curl. Joining me as MCs are my co-editors, Karen Melander Magoon, Barbara Paschke, and Christina Brown. As you know, this is the uh, international reading of the uh, of our new anthology, Healing a Fractured World, uh, published by the Revolutionary Poets Brigade and uh, uh, Catalumba Press. And um, uh, this is being recorded and it's gonna be on YouTube tomorrow. As uh, everyone here in the Bay Area knows, um, in the sky above us, it has just been an annual solar eclipse. So this is really a very powerful moment. And we're meeting here today to share our poems on the theme of healing a fractured world. We dare to offer these poems as our response to those brutal explosions of war and destruction, the forces of mutual devastation still raging unchecked and threatening to engulf us all once again. The answer of the poets of the world to this insanity that is wrecking countless innocents, destroying our lives, homes, and families, incinerating our beautiful living planet into inhabitability. Our response is words of peace and reconciliation. As we attempted to articulate in the preface to the anthology, although technology offers the promise of prosperity for all, nonetheless, destruction continues to rage. Our world continues to be stripped of our resources. Countless people continue to be oppressed. Our biosphere, our biosphere continues to be destroyed. But poetry opens eyes and minds. Poetry can help us heal and see the world and its perilous challenges through different lenses. In these poems are threads of truth and inspiration that can help humanity finally come to our senses and help our planet to survive and thrive. Due to time constraints, we will not be making introductions. In respect for the other poets here, please read only your published poem and refrain from making other remarks. The order of readers is in the chat. In the chat. We'll get started with Tony Alderando, if he's here. Uh, I, don't, I don't see him here, so we'll get back to him. And so we'll go to Manaz. Manaz Madia. Mm -hmm. un Unmute Manaz, unmute yourself, Manaz. You're muted. You're still muted, Manaz. Unmute, dear. I have control on it. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, that's good. Okay. okay, I'm making it short. I'm dedicating this poem to innocent people dying on both sides of the conflict in Middle East and to my dear uncle who died today. من آنجا بودم گواه بر جنون آدمی کشتن تخریب و گردن زدن من آنجا بودم و اخبار جنگ کودکان گرسنه تجاوز ترس از پلیس ترس از کاپیتالیست I bore witness to the depth of human madness a witness to violence destruction and brutality I stood there as the news of wars, starving children, assault, the fear of authority, the fear of losing one's home, the fear of unchecked capitalism constantly weighed upon my conscience. I yearned for war as tender as an infant, a war I could nurture and protect, an infant that could grow in the embrace of nature, surrounded by peace amidst blooming flowers and sturdy trees, in harmony with birds and the animals. Though we cannot reset the world completely, let us strive to usher 
in a new era, one where we encourage the spirit of Adam and Eve to birth generations of kindness and gentleness. Thank you. Also, Atefe will not be here, be here today. Thank you. Um, did you say Am Amit is is not going to be here? Atefe. Um, how, how about it, it, um, the next reader is uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bailey. I don't, I don't see. I'm, no, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Um, okay. It's called The Big Love It. Want it. True it. This is it. The Big Love It. It. It's for each one. And every one, it, it. Earth's made of it, sun, stars, space it, galaxy, universe it, it. It's extraordinary, it, it. Know it, you lover, I'm made of it, you're made of it, it. I'm writing with it, full of words, isn't it? Noun and verb it, subject and object it, and all the colors it, it. Do the chores it, make dinner it, ride the bus it, walk the dog it, pet the cat it, be kind to others it, it. It's not just for you and me it, so plant it, fish it, hound it, parrot it, ape it, grin and bear it, you won't outfox it, don't squirrel it away it, share it it. Bring the kids, mom, dad, old weird Georgie along it, come out and play it, hot potato it, tag your it, it. Because big love is it, isn't it? It never wasn't it, it. Where would I be without it? Come on and shout it, go ahead and out it, it. Live a life without it and look where that gets you it. Too many losing out on it from their very beginnings, it, or anywhere along the way, it, it. It was always the big it, never little, small, or tiny it. It's the biggest thing ever, it. It's what makes life meaningful, it, it. They keep trying to sell it to us, but you can't buy the real thing. You can't eat it or drink it or fill that hole inside you, it or slip it on your foot, it, it won't wear out, it, it's priceless, isn't it? it? It may wax and wane like the moon, it, and eclipse like the sun, it, but it never disappears, it, it. It's just there in the heart of everything, it, and every living thing's got a heart, it, it. So save from some for yourself, then wrap the rest and give it away, it, it. Everyone dies, but not it. Forever will it last, it. Believe in it, then you'll see it in everyone, it. Every chance you get, it. Because it's the big love it, isn't it? It, it, it. Our, uh, our next reader is uh, Jermaine, J Jermaine Drugenbord. Uh, is Jermaine here? Okay, yes. yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Excellent. Okay, here I am. Uh, go ahead, read your poem. Okay, so two very short poems from my book, The Road of Being. Artificial Intelligence. Rifters overflow their banks. Houses are demolished, cars swept away by the raging waters. Man has disrupted nature. In vain, wisdom's warning words with a chip implanted in the brain offer no wisdom or even more blindness and indoctrination. And the second short one, terror. 
which is very actual now. The war is no longer declared, but continues. The unheard has become daily, said Ingeborg Bachmann. Homes are destroyed by missiles. Innocent people, women, children, killed by the northern madness of misleaders, unwinged the dove, the truth, raped by lies. Thank you. The next reader is uh, Kemlin Tan Bop. Happy because it writes happy. 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 happy, sorry. That's sorry. okay. We're we're writers. The crack is a spider. Three high balls. When I was eight, I dreamt the same dream for several nights. I saw the children of the world weeping. I woke up each night drenched in tears. Why? Are they crying? I beg, because they don't know they are loved. I made a child's promise that I would tell each of them. I tried time and again to make good that vow, but felt I always came short. I forgot to tell the little girl in the mirror. She was loved too. I'm making it right. You are enough. You are beautiful. I love you. Isn't it ironic? I fractured my molar. After extraction and feeling the emptiness upon my fleshy gums, I succumbed to vanity. I emptied my hoarded savings and boarded up my gaping hole to the tune of thousands because I'm uninsured beneath the broken medical system. Oh, hail capitalism, taxation without clear representation hidden behind IRS mumbo jumbo. It's all Greek to me although I probably could decipher Shona and Koine better than my Schedule C. I get it. Every April 15, I honor my right to work, to pay the bills, to shelter my household, and to corrupt young minds as a teacher. So while I stood in line refilling depleted school supplies, minding my own damn business to the tunes of Alanis Morissette on Spotify, I didn't see the guy out of the barrel came flying by a bullet, made a beeline through my brand spanking new tooth. Life is hell. Pain screams in my head. Bang, you're dead. Which comes first? The chicken or the egg? A paradox posed by ancient Greek philosophers gloating over our cognizance. We fixate, navel gaze, masturbate while the clock counts down. We, the great human race, ravage resources, close our eyes and ears. We slam our minds and hearts shut and nail our mantles as stewards in the coffin of an instant gratification. When all is depleted, would there be a wasteland to abandon? Who will be left to carry Gaia's beer? Vanity, all that remained was one bad egg. So uh, Tony Alderondo has arrived, so we're gonna go back to uh, Tony. Um, Tony, right, we've just, uh, okay, I guess he's not there, so we'll, we'll move on, and uh, Sarah is not, how about Lynn Barnes? Marco, Mark, Mar Marco Freitas? Hello, John, I'm here. Okay, Marco, go, me? Go, go ahead. Can I? Can I, can I read it? Yes, yeah, go ahead, yes. Okay, I read in Portuguese and then in English, okay? Yes. Sonho somos. Os dizem que os sonhos devem ser vividos, outros que eles devem ser divididos. 
Já outro que sonho, sonho são. E eu o que digo, e eu o que sonho. Às vezes o tempo passado me é futuro, do presente ou do pretérito, eu já nem sei. O que esperar dos sonhos? O que esperar do que somos? Som e sonhos, partituras atemporais. Our dreams. Some say dreams should be lived. Others, that they should be shared. One might say dreams are just dreams. And what do I say? And what do I dream? Sometimes the past looks like future to me, present or past, but who knows? What to expect from a dream? What to expect from who you are? Sound and dreams. Timeless musical scores. Thank you. Um, Tony, Tony Alderando, are you, are you are you there now? Um, I don't hear you, Tony. Okay, so uh, how about a. Uh, 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 Sarah Thilaku. Hello. Hi, Hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. I'm glad to be here with you. I'm going to read you my poem, uh, Ancient Anger, uh, in to Greek and then into English. Από τα έγκατα του μέλλοντος, αρχαίος υψώνεται θυμός. Πράξη πρώτη της ιστορίας. Ξύσταμε και απορώ. Τι ως ήτο να φωνεύσω, αδελφού μου. Η ανθρώπινη φωνή μου απαντά. Εγώ. Εγώ, το αρχαίο θηρίο. Εγώ, στη χάβνωση του κόσμου. Εγώ, δεν είμαι εσύ ακόμη. Εσύ, μπροστά μου στέκεσαι. Μη φοβάσαι. Τραγούδισέ μου. Γράψε μου, κάνε επιτέλους τον ανθρωπίνο δυνατό, τον άνθρωπο, άσε με να κάνει. Ancient anger. From the depths of the future, an ancient anger is rising. Act one of history. I stand out and wonder, who was the assassin of my brother? The human voice says to me, I, I, the ancient beast, I, in the dullness of the world, I am not you yet. You are standing in front of me. Don't be afraid. Sing to me, write to me as humanly possible. Be at last a human. Let me be. Thank you. Um, we'll try you again, Tony. Tony Alderando, you're, you're, you're on the list here, but um, you haven't responded, so. Tony seems to be muted. Well, yeah, he has to uh, unmute himself. Yeah, I, I get the idea he's having a problem with that. Okay, um, we'll we'll try to get back to him. Uh, is Virginia here, Virginia Barrett? How about Kamru Lassan? Uh, we'll, then we'll try J Judith Ein Bernhard, Bernhard. Judith? Whoops, you were there a minute ago. Oh, I'm here. Okay, there you are. Test, test, test. The poet sends a message in a bottle. The bottle itself is a message. It's chipped and crazed glass, a familiar shape. Coca-Cola made sweet with brown sugar from Mexico, a fad of the leisure class. The paper in the bottle is from a mill in Kentucky. Last stop on the road to ruin for fledgling meth heads, scourge of the rural poor. 
The pencil used to write the message is from China. Mysterious home of inscrutable workers, suppliers of goods to the world. If you receive this message, the poet writes, be kind to another human on this frail and aging planet. And don't forget to send the bottle out again. Our next reader will be uh, uh, Christina Brown. Christina? From the fire, phosphorescent in four parts for all the poets who sometimes perform outdoors. One, phosphorescent. I love the word, the way it sounds, what it means, giving light after the presence and then the absence of incident radiation but it often overwhelms every word around it. Two, this is a message from the incandescent liminal zone where life fights death, where we give people, including ourselves, reasons to live. The place of extremity, intensity, where pastel glows electric against the black, makes ever expanding mandalas. Three, from the fire, embers pop, explode, disappear. From the fire, sparks fly up, mix with the silver stars above the dark blue horizon. I blink, see orange silhouettes, phosphorescent flowers, faces, bodies, spirits of the innumerable adored dead, the ones I loved while they lived. They lift me into the bright darkness. Four, now, tonight, beneath the tower, brighter images of those who create, sing and laugh and proclaim, they, you, make complex patterns of delight, shine over the old glow. Thank you. Well, thank you, Christina. So we've missed a few people, but I'm going to give over the uh, MC job to uh, Karen Melander Magoon now. Karen? Thank you so much. Beautiful, John. Um, the first poet on my list is Giancarlo Campagna. Giancarlo, are you there? Okay, maybe yes, not. I'm here. Oh, okay, good, good. I was just slow to the unmute. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Um, my poem is called Our Actions Make the World. Uh, even on the eve of springtime, now autumn, see the swirls and undulations of the clouds as streams of gunpowder or worse, cluster bombing, fractures of landscape, towns and cities shorn of people and buildings. Inside where you press the remote as you do your laundry, heads proclaiming, when the roads are clear, assaults can begin again, a recurring festival of death in a time of renewal and growth, mechanisms deep in the grain to secure resource, disperse fear, 
spoken in the old languages of violence. It's difficult to resolve the combined fertility rituals of spring, landscapes exploding with bloom, coupled with that of gross theft and bloodshed. It's hard to reconcile plant growth, the rape of the non-combatant, the murdering of the little ones, tactics of war, the call for more tanks, rallying of citizenry who are mostly afraid of their own governance and themselves. You don't find empathy in the curriculum, nor tape to the inside lid of the emotional toolbox. Where do we begin to access those natural tendencies of the human being, the being we have always drawn from to ease our suffering? Where do we locate those who provide clarity to the eye, mercy to the hand? We gaggle over the confusing whispers of who knows what suffering might do to you if you knew it to be closer than you can feel. Knowing outright our actions make the world. Knowing our actions make the world. Peace, everybody. Thank you so much. The next poet, Janet Cannon. Janet? Okay. Memo for an angel. Dear angel of death to decency, we are not ready to invite you to define our destiny. It's just that the deplorables have swallowed bobblehead anti-science pills and sip the cool age of rage serum to support lies. They choke us like chicken bones in the throat of harmony is dying in the arms of dece deception, is stoking violence even at school board meetings. Their duplicity is throttling voter access as they defy safe straw mask mandates with FU insolence. They're refusing vaccines to show contempt for the rest of us here where fake is real, here where truth is losing, here where hope struggles. The next poet is Ziba Karbasi, and I'm having trouble finding her. I hope you're here. Ziba Karbasi? No? Okay. The next poet then yeah, uh, was here. Um, oh, you are. She she here. Has, and she's just waving, but I don't hear her. And she's not muted. Oh. I don't hear her. Ziba. Yeah, Ziba, we can't hear you. We, we can't hear you, Ziba. Well, let's get, let's get, we're going to have to get, get back to her then, I guess. Uh -oh. Karen, you're muted. Karen, we can't hear you. Got it. Sorry. So sorry. Um, if Ziba will get back to you, the next one then is Anna Lombardo. Anna? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. The song of colored houses, red cuts and deep in the clay earth, free diving in the sea, harping with fresh trees. Down here, talking of books, hearing voices of love, we saw the new world. 
Shut up, little soldier. Don't be afraid. We carry poems, not weapons. We will never sell our soul to destroy this land. Once a poet wrote, come and hang your weapons to the branches of our rhymes. And now we all tell you that you must too before it's too late. Please abandon the masters of warfare. Let them sing their bloody songs, but alone. Brief with us, disobey for peace. Can't you see? War is not in your skin. Thank you. Thank you. Our next poet, I think will be read by Manaz Badihan. You said that Atafe Sharma Halyan is not there. So Manaz, will you be reading for Atafe? Uh, no, Karen, no. Okay, yes. okay. Um, she wasn't able to attend. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, then the, the next is Angelina Longueras. Angelina Longueras, Longueras. Angelina, no? Okay. She's here, she's here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Angelina, are you muted? There you are, I see you. We can't hear you. Why don't we just get back, circle back to her. Okay, we'll circle back. So sorry, Angelina. Anything coming? No, okay, we'll be go back. The next uh, poet is Frances or Frances. Combes. And that may be read by Barbara, Barbara Pashka. Um, no. First, I read in English and then Barbara. Okay. First, I read in French Wonderful. and then <laughs> okay. I will read in English. If you agree. Okay. Francis Combes. Okay. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Éloge et condamnation des murs. Vive les murs qui soutiennent les toits. Abat les murs érigés en barrière. Vive les murs qui protègent du froid. Abat les murs qui servent de frontières. Vive les murs abritant des écoles. Et ceux des cours, les cours des farandoles. Abat les murs couverts de barbelés, faits pour barrer la voie aux réfugiés. Abat les murs garnis de miradors. Vive les murs des chambres où l'on dort. Abat les murs qui font grandir la haine. Vive les ponts et les routes humaines. Abat les murs qui ouvrent des blessures. Jamais les murs n'ont fait le monde sûr. Vive les murs éclaire des fenêtres. Vive les murs que le soleil pénètre. Les murs murant, le monde murmurant, font de ce monde un champ de mine indigne. Abat les murs qui divisent les gens. Vive les murs où peut pousser la vigne. Merci. C'est so beautiful en French. Praise and condemnation of walls. Long live the walls that support the roofs down with walls erected as barriers. Long live the walls that protect against the cold, down with walls that serve as borders. Long live the walls housing the schools and those of classes where farandoles are danced, down with walls covered with barbed wire made to block the route of the refugees. Down with walls embellished with watchtowers, Long live the walls of bedrooms, down with walls that make hate grow. Long live the bridges and paths humans take, down with walls that open wounds. Walls have never made the world safe. Long live the walls lit up by windows. Long live the walls the sun penetrates. Walls walling up the whispering world make of this world a shameful minefield down with walls that divide people. Long live the walls where the grapevines can climb. Thank you. I'll check again on Ziba Kabasi and or Angelina Longueras. If not, we'll go on to 
Sandro Sardella. Sandro. Ziba, maybe the sound is turned off on your computer because you're not muted, but we can't hear you. I arrived. Oh, hey, hey. Eccomi. I'm here. Giovanna okay. is, 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 is Sandro Sabella. Sandro I Sabella. Have... Okay. Wait. Okay. Dripping Discanto a Jack Hirschman. Uno. Nella storia, il mare delle storie, sovraccarico di elmi, spade e mitragliatrici. I libri sono muti. Nel naufragare cadaveri euforici parlano ai muri. Il poeta americano sgrana centinaia di arcani, canti epici, sapienti, furenti, sulla polvere luccicante e velenosa del sistema capitalistico. Con il dito leggere e scrivere pensieri in fuga, la scrittura si raccorda al cielo, si impasta di terra, acqua, fuoco, ma la parola masticata riverbera la durezza di dei muscolosi e ladri. 2. Nell'andirivieni del tempo le gabbie, nella deriva dei riflessi le ipocrisie, gli squilibri, le bugie, la gente curiosa e inebetita ripulisce le tombe di una memoria bruciata, i lamenti di Coltrane, di un sax sopra la notte a occidente, la pianura dentro impallidisce su cieli medio orientali, severi e spogli, e i nomi sono guerra, e i corpi sono fame, di un navigare per non smettere, ancora nomi, ancora corpi, ancora parole, per le morte, ambulanti da masticare, tra il gelo di una intollerabile indifferenza. 3. Pietre e vento, squarci di indecente bellezza, un fiore o una scarpa e camminare, nei cimiteri del cuore danzando, nei cristalli del tempo, annusa, annusa le mie polveri sottili nel fuoco delle banche, appartengo al popolo nel nome del pane senza padroni, i muri di Tunisi, di Gerusalemme, di Odessa, con colori scritti resistono, intralciano i loro piani suona tamburo il vento fruga dentro i capelli nella piazza aquiloni tra sangue bruciato pestato già spuntano i primi fili d'erba 4 il bianco e il nero è silenzio scoprirsi nella neve di aprile con baci sulla bocca sfacciati incantevoli così violentemente dolci, così dove la guerra non ha volto di donna, le mani meravigliose, oltre le macerie, lo scavo dentro, lo sguardo riconciliante, nutrito di visione sugli inganni, sugli errori, mitici e angeli delle discariche incidono, dopo l'erosione degli anni, con inchiostro, una linea rossa, onda, rabbia, sabbia. Thank you. And I believe the translation or poem in, in English for this will be read, read by Lapo Buccini. Where is Lapo? Lapo is here. Ci sono, ci sono, sono. Hey, Ciao. Hey. <laughs> hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Dripping the scant. Jack Hirschman. One, through history, the sea of stories overloaded with helmets, swords, machine guns, books are silent in the shipwreck. Euphoric corpses talk to walls. The American poet shouts out hundreds of arcane. Sagely raging, Epic chants on the shimmering poisonous dust 
of the capitalist system, reading and writing with a finger, fleeting thought, writing connects with the sky, blends with earth, water, fire, but the chewed word reverberates the hardness of muscular thieving God. Two. In the coming and going of time, the cages, in the drifting of reflections, the hypocrisies, the imbalances, the lies, doping, busy buzzes, clean out the graves of a bird memory, the Coltrane laments of a sax over the night in the west, the plains within turned pale on middle eastern skies stern and bare and the names are war the names and the bodies are hunger for navigation never to stop more names more bodies more words dead pearls wandering to be chewed in the chill of an intolerable indifference. Three. Stones and wind, gashes of indecent beauty, a flower or a shoe, and walking in the graveyards of the heart, dancing in the crystals of time, smell my fine particulates in the pyre of banks. I belong to the people in the name of Fred, no master, in the walls of Tunis, Jerusalem, Odessa, in written colors, resist, thwart the war plants, drum roll, the wind rummages through the hair, in the square, kite, in blood, burned, trampled, the first blades of grass already sprout, Four. The black and white is silence, discovering oneself in April snow with brazen enchanting kisses on the mouth, so violently sweet, where war has no woman's face, splendid hands beyond the wreckage, digging into a conciliatory gaze raised on visions, deceit, mistakes, miracle. Angels of landfills etch after the erosion of the ages in ink, a red line, line, wave, sand, fury. Thank you so much for hearing Jack in Italian and in his English. Beautiful. Uh, Viva Kabasi has. Uh, no, it is Angelina Longueras has asked, please, to be able to read her poem from her phone. John, can you handle that? Um, well, uh, she, I'm, if she, if she comes into the waiting room, I'm not sure how to, I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, I, you know, I'm, okay, so I, I, don't know how, I don't know how to make that happen. Angelina, try to get into the waiting room again, and we'll go on with the next poet, who is Kitty Costello. I am here. Okay. This is called Healing a Fractured World. Two acrostics. So twice down the side of the page is written Healing a Fractured World, um, starting with the letter for each line. One, healing our own ancestors from eons past until now holding tenderly, avowing colonizers and colonized alike, laced together in the fabric of our cells. Now alive here, we given a chance to untangle countless ancient karma snarls. Free the prisoners within, reform the inner imperialists, actualize true reparations in the confines of our own skins till we know how to undo the harms we thoughtlessly reenact on others. 
Reclaim every madman, reprobate, and thief, despite seeming otherness. We are flying along on this earthly orb that needs our love for real and all fellow passengers longing for the very same thing. Dare to be the one who reaches out first. Two. Here's how it begins. Every small hand pushing all at once, all in the same direction, like what it took to erect standing stones or invade all the places humans never should have set foot, getting everyone on the same page, all together for the good. Can you fathom it? A great turning of winds riding our course, activating all the goodness and care every heart longs to offer. We are tiny transients among tiny transients, as unlikely as anyone to be reincarnated in this gnarled, ruptured, existential earth home disaster we all face together. What better time to open wide with utmost reverence for every other lost being seeking refuge? Please drench the world with your love. Thank you, Kitty. The next poet is, is D.L. Long. And after that, we'll see if we can get Angelina. <laughs> D.L. Long. Thank you. Uh, my poem is called, We Must Pick Up the Pieces. We must pick up the pieces of the dreams our ancestors left behind when they fought to change the world. We must pick up the pieces of love and carry them in our hearts so that it may spread to all humanity. We must pick up the pieces of this broken world and reassemble it into a mosaic of great beauty. We must pick up the pieces of work unfinished and carry forth the vision that things will change for the better. We must pick up the pieces of this union, rising up proudly together for as long as it takes so that humanity is assured a future greater than anything we have ever seen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for the moment, we'll go on then to Nina Serrano. Nina, I know you're there. You hear me? Yes. Good. Free dump day. What an adventure. We pulled out of the driveway with the car stuffed, all the boxes and bags that were piled up in the garage, boxes still unpacked from our move six years ago, and huge black plastic bags full of unwanted giveaways and old clothes, and discreet bags of electronic waste that didn't work anymore. The little car was packed in tight with just enough room for us in front. It was easy to spot the others en route. Pickup trucks filled to the brim with old toys, bicycles and car parts and whatnot. Teams of people waving us in, indicating where we should go. You didn't have to get out of your car. There were more teams of people showing you where to unload your loads. What a mobilization of people, equipment, and trucks. All about too much stuff that doesn't even count that most of our neighbors have to park on the street because their garages are full of stuff. Stuff is stuffing our lives all along the highway sides. More storage units are being built to put all the stuff in. We're choking on stuff while others do not even have a home. Free Dump Day helps free us of our societal shame. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Nina. Um, Anita Cruz, are you there? Anita? Anita Cruz? She's is not here right now. Okay. It, she told me to, uh, to read at least uh, a part of, his po of her poem. Can I do okay. that? Sure. Yeah, the last stanza of her poem. Mm -hmm. titled and then do you want to go on you are next after yeah her. that's right yeah that, okay her poem is a long one so i'm gonna only read one stanza the title is the ark in the ark frown at noah mm -hmm. you saw the hollowness in painted faces in masquerade parties after the emptiness of the city streets. Curling yourself on the corner, you told me how hideous it is to ride the roller coaster. The things you have to do in extreme weather patterns. Will there be spring or summer after the long wintry chill? I cannot find the skeleton key to unlock the city's bright gate in my dream. Even the astrologer knew the danger but kept his mouth still. The story how the iceberg gushed the Titanic as if planned by the heavens. Do you remember what we found out when you were born? How our doctor saw a second heart beating beside your main one, as if there is a cure. If the first one failed, a new world will be born here to replace it. That's it. That's the end of her point. Uh, this is my poem, uh, uh, Greta Chides a Society in Denial. You know, Greta is the teenager from Sweden who I heard that they sued uh, the EU parliament for denial of human rights for the second generation because of climate change. This is my poem. Greta chides a society in denial. Let me tell you, the red line is coming fast that we may never even notice it. As the ice birds are breaking up and the oceans are rising fast. Last night, I dreamt a tree touch the gate of heaven as another fire broke out in the Amazons, trying to raise all the forest, breathing all the oxygen of our earth. A tree stump would remain after the ashes fall all over the earth. I wanted to heal the earth that is fractured now beyond repair. Almighty Father is mad, looking at the way we spawn our word and destroy it unnecessarily. We see what is coming but seem helpless anyway. Such a future is no more than a thin ozone layer above the earth. The next famine or hurricane as the night blankets the flowers from the buds. What of my children's dreams, my friends, and my fellow contemporaries, I should ask? 
We dream of a green that is now broken, tables, chairs, and houses from the wars, or is it the lining of the tiger's mouth, the blood of my brothers in Ukraine, or the front wall of the fiery furnace in West Africa? Have we inclined so far back that we cannot go forward anymore? Maybe it is the heart of a baboon, hyena, or crocodile in ourselves as we try to murder with claws, daggers, or bayonet sharp teeth. Add this to some landscape burning black tar in Nigeria. It will be easy to say the oracle has lost her lips after a long, deep, dark sleep. And then she woke up bubbling, frightening prophecies. Is there a way to heal a, bro a word that is already broken? Just a palm reader hiding an eye with faint ignorance of the signs. The quadron heat in summer days and excessive chill in winters. No more platform for obs obscurity. Reject the corner of denial and bliss. Articulate and rumble like an insane, bubbling, wild-eyed man but only true rational action will be be saved. The old stories with different protagonists are here after the old last ice age 10,000 years ago. Some relics like Kubelki of Turkey or the Sphinx of Egypt are still here to remind us of our past. Every dream comes out after the permafrost towed out in the Arctic to wring out memories like rugs. Why not them come out alive after the, they are blanketed by mist of time, saber through tigers, giants lost, mammoths, bisons, and there was Adam, first man that saw pristine nature after the heaven splits from the earth. Even the seagull squawks out its story after darkness, tried to choke her before dawn. Thank you. John Curl is the next poet. I wonder, John, is there any way at this point to try to get Angelia Longueras in to read from the phone sure, no, or shall no, we? Ask, um... You know the number of poets uh, have we, we've skipped over, so you know we can go back. Uh, you know, try to get her in, see if she can. Well, she, yeah. Uh, the only way I could imagine is if she goes out completely and comes back in. She said she was not that she was uh, somehow shut out and then wasn't able to get in. So yeah, I'm just going to continue. Now. I have two more poets after you, and then I don't know what. We see Angelina, Angelina is there. Angelina is there. She's okay, in. can she get in? Can she read? Uh, Angelina, can you read? Now she's gone. No. She was there a minute ago. Um, but we'll we'll try again. So. Okay. Well, I'll go on with you, and then I have two more, and then we move to uh, Barbara. So. Okay. Um. Absorbing evil. Quote. Be loving enough to absorb evil and understanding enough to turn an enemy into a friend, unquote. Understanding has always been the basis of friendship and understanding your enemy has always been critical in struggle. Sometimes enemies do become friends it has happened many times. The exception that demonstrates the rule. When I was a kid in the 1950s, my grandpa was the only person I knew who ever talked about revolution. It was the McCarthy era and radical social change was dangerous to talk about. 
Then the civil rights movement exploded. I'd already learned from my grandpa, even before I learned again from Martin and Malcolm and the others, that the glue of this system is violence. My grandpa, you see, was a communist from back in the 1920s and, and 30s. But when building a just world turned out to be much more elusive than the old revolutionaries had predicted, many of the dreamers of social justice and solidarity forever blamed each other and turned on each other. Then World War II exploded and social change was off the table for the duration. Beyond my grandpa, the first people I knew who talked about what we called the revolution were other kids. The revolution we kids talked about and almost believed in was not my grandpa's revolution of workers seizing power and instituting social justice, but the revolution of us seizing power over our lives and living differently. We're still walking along that cultural quake fault today. Demagogues intent on chaos and destruction still stir the poisons threatening to engulf us all, while too many of our estranged sisters and brothers still enable them. Martin and Malcolm must have understood from the beginning that revolution is very personal and absorbing evil can exact a very heavy toll. Follow that long trail of blood as it bends along the dirt road toward justice. Quote, be loving enough to absorb evil and understanding enough to turn an enemy into a friend, unquote. That's what Martin Luther King wrote to the first riders of integrated buses in Montgomery, Alabama, back in 1956. Thank you, John. I see Ziba Karbasi is here, and I'd ask you to read. Is that okay, Ziba? But you need to unmute. Ziba, you are still muted. You need to unmute. She wrote in the chat that she's trying. Oh, and she can't unmute. And I can't unmute her. So I've tried. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's maybe she can just phone in and we can put the phone in. Tell her to call. Maybe she can just can call you and we'll just uh, have her, you know, just. Uh, just call her. me. Yeah, or or call call well. I don't. I don't have my phone. Have phone number. We don't want to give phone numbers out over over <laughs> this situation. So, uh, but if she has if she has, if she has one of our phone numbers, she could call us and we could just put the phone up here. And Ziva, can you phone in to the Zoom? Because we can't hear you. Uh, you're not able somehow to unmute. They're having trouble. Oh, there you are. Oh no, that's Sarah. <laughs> oh. Is that okay now? What yes. about now? Yes. Good, good, good. Okay? Good. Good. Okay, it's a little then. buzzy, but it's fine. Yes, go ahead. Maro as be fahmat be fah, as fahmaniat, fitratat as qab aql na as afarin khanat, as kitab khane na kun he kal mega, maro as ixtisamat at bixtas, as ixtisaniat. جنمت اعتمانت اعتمانیت در اون گه بی تشویش اگر اینان همه آدمند تو آدم نباش چنان عشق ببر که بزرگترین انتقامت از خیانت کار گسستنت باشد 
Know me from your knowing. Understand me from your understanding, your understood, your nature. Not from the frame of your intellect, but from the sub subconscious of your subconscious. Not from your library, but from bare bones of its ink. That personal, distinctive, exclusive, your genuine, your genius, spherical volume of trust on shaking inside. If these are human, don't be a human. Love in a way that is your greatest response to surgery to be detached. Thank you. Glad we, glad we got, we made contact. Thank um, you to me. <laughs> Lu the, the next poet is Lucille Longay, who is here. Yes. Um, the title of my poem is The Legacy, and it's dedicated to my grandchildren. I leave you the last 4% of the ancient redwoods that once covered more than 2 million acres of the California coast. Watch for Roosevelt elks, black-tailed deer and mountain lions among the trees. For spotted owls, marbled murrelets, flycatchers, thrushes, jays and woodpeckers in the canopy. I leave you the last 10,000 blue whales of the hundreds of thousands that once roamed the oceans, the largest animals known to have lived. They've been recorded singing Beethoven's Ode to Joy. Their huge hearts beat only twice per minute when they dive beneath the surface of the sea. I leave you a watery planet now warming because humans are so dependent on oil and coal. Wildfires turn the sky orange and drive away birds while flash floods shatter houses and trees in their path. May your generation create a world that runs on goodwill, fairness, sunshine, and wind. I leave you a country torn by hatred and lies. Though these are age-old problems, they must be faced and conquered by each new generation. Don't believe everything you hear. People lie for many reasons, ignorance, malice, mischief, greed. Truth always exists somewhere and you can find it. I leave you the redwood tree in my backyard which suffers from Botryosphera cankers and the Anna's hummingbirds that visit the Mexican sage out front while I write poems inside. I leave you those too, brief records of my journeys, joys, and sorrows. I leave you grief. I leave you love. I leave you hope. Thank you. Karen, you're mu you're muted. Karen, you have you have to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Um, we finished this set with um, Carol Denny, and then go on to Barbara's set. Thank you very much. I, I don't think she's here. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, we won't, we won't hear Carol Denny right now, maybe, maybe later. Um, I hear yes, a song, I think her song, Pregnant and in Jail. No, no Carol Denny right now, okay. Then um, if Angelina Longueras, is is we haven't figured that out then we're going to move on to barbara pashka's set and welcome our wonderful barbara okay hello everybody our um so great to be here our first reader in my list is carlos Raul Dupla. are you here carlos yes he's here oh good excellent day. Yeah. Okay. Is it time? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. 
I just wanted to say something before that, that I'm remembering over a great singer by the name of Marvin Gaye that said, Mother, Mother, there are too many people are dying, too many children are dying. We got to have love to conquer hate. Let the seed of peace raise in our heart. Since my youth, I had lived half century in the climate of war. This space of time from the Atlantic water to the Pacific Ocean, a carnival of blood has squeezed through the universe like a ball of fire. The earth cries for peace. Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, Korea, Vietnam, Santo Domingo, Cambodia, Laos, Grenada, Nicaragua, Panama, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Venezuela, and Western Sahara and Dundas. Crossing over into a circle on the other side for a new horizon to ride. Millions are suffering homelessness and dying in the streets. Food insecurity is in the order of the day. Billions for the war machine a rage against the war machine, a past memories of marching down Wall Street with the high school student mobilization against the war, verses of peace that should lift the light of love all over the world, climbing over to the mound, looking into the sky, drinking a cafecito and listening to Richie Haven sing the peace train that we in the age of darkness. The war mongols are dancing in the edge of a nuclear destruction of our planet. And today, spring is near, and new dawn will rise to live in harmony together and heal without demands to an old freedom fighter from the Student non Biden Coordinating Committee. Jamil Aramin, A.K. Nong is wrapped round with Bas, Peace, and Mia. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our next reader, Agneta Falk. Let's see, are you here? Uh, Agneta, not here? I don't think she's here. Okay. Well, then we shall have to move on to Mark Fishbein. Oh, yeah, sorry, a little late. So, I think I wrote. I think I wrote this poem um, right after the United Nations issued their code red warning uh, to humanity. I think here I'll put it on the screen as I read it. Code red for humanity. You, who was there, tell me about the past. Tell me about the fields of fruit trees, the open skies filled with migrating birds, flowing to the minions of wind, bowing to the minions of wind. How boundless the world must have been filled with green shores and crystal peaks before we filled the seas with plastics and the deepest wells with broken glass. I live in a labyrinth of the geometric. The air I breathe is filtered and dry. My eyes are lasers, my blood electric, a 21st century cave dweller. I live inside. This computer takes me around the globe to share laments for the extinctions. The food arrives to my door from slaughterhouses, from acres of bleached wheat and corn. How we have voyaged on a ship of apathy in search of new continents to plunder. It has now been a century left to ponder the ultimate reality of our machines. No matter now, we cannot survive without them. The future looms a witch's shawl, a sorcerer's rant, a maniac Moses bringing plagues of AI. Outside are continents of poisoned reefs, tarred forests and frozen sands. Tell me of landscapes free from the touch of man, 
and the world as it was outside my screen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, next we have Luis Garcia. Luis? Yeah, here. Ah. Welcome. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the invite. Um, the poem is called Coffee, dedicated to Jose Café, para mi papá Jose. Coffee. In the mountains, cl clouds climb, hug the jungle landscape, provides respite, steam, hot, hissing heat that surrounds, waterfalls over a sweatful youth brow, glistening aspirations drip. Dreamers dream, coffee flowers, fruit, labor, exploited, they have taken everything. Told not to come, deaf to ignorance, he leaves. The green leaves echo, talk, whisper about revolutionary sentiments. Winning in Loteria gives opportunity. Bitter, black, no sugar. This is how my grandmother enjoyed it. It's not that she enjoyed the bitter taste, but her life, like her skin, dark brown from the sun, ardent, full of wrinkles, history. My first sip. A child, light brown tone, extra sugar, very sweet. You can be this way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and next we have Rafael Jesus Gonzalez. If you are here. Como son las cosas. Ah. Hemos crecido fuera de toda proporción. Hecho un mundo demasiado grande para la tierra. Fijado la mirada en los cielos. Para un futuro hogar. Porque hemos echado a perder el paraíso que nos dio nacer. Y ya por pronto no podrá sostener la vida. As things are. We have grown out of all proportion, <laughs> made a world too big for the earth, fixed our sights to heaven for a future home, because we have ruined the paradise that birthed us, and soon may no longer be able to sustain life. Oh, yes. Indeed. Uh, thank you. Next, we have Egon Gunther. Uh, he sent a video, and I'm going to try to play it. Okay. I was wondering what that meant. <laughs> uh, okay. Hold on a second. Uh, Is that all we can do? Instead of giving all for everyone and more, it's happiness that each one's looking for. Fear burning in the heart, sweating in the furrow, suffering man's lot in their social class burrow, fleeing from the shades of punishments looming on the run like slaves, in aimless flights erring. Is that all you know and go for? Cannot you offer more? Creatures black by shame and necessity, obeying their master's order with audacity, living as serfs in Leviathan's treadmill, vacation choice missed, the worst of their fill. Dreaming greedily of cocaine, of sweet loafing on white sand. Is that all we can do? Cannot we offer more? At least you got to hear it. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Uh, Bill Hatch.
Hello. Hello. You hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Can't see you, but we can hear you. Why can't you see me? <laughs> Sorry. Oh well. No. You want to hear me? Or <laughs> <laughs> sure. Shall I read? Shall I read? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the great big beautiful beast. Soles of our feet itching, milling under the fairy building. Sounds of many voices. Surrounded by faces we've always known, but not by name. We, who wear our hearts on our shirts, march for another day, hope to bring hope to the streets. Our cry, our grito, breaks the fangs of the transnational plutocracy. Sonia Sen awakens and dances in St. Mary's Square. The faces of saints of all our struggles sail over Market Street with the gulls and the ravens. There's Jack waving from the sidewalk in his trench coat. Crystal care and love song for humanity. We hear a cocky office drawing union, democracy, workers' fight for equality to the tune of gunfire, cracked heads, bones breaking and screaming. Now his brothers march impeccably in white caps and black crystals. Ancient wobblies come by land, antique comets come by sea. Ferlin Getty utters a final prayer, warns our belly to forget our blisters before the street itself bellows. We shall overcome, hell no we won't go. And El Pueblo Unido, Hamas said, and Peter. The arc of Harvey's voice surpasses the sound of the straight white bullet. His blood cries out, along with George's blood, Dow Wilson's blood, and the blood of Condorapas and Perry, and the forgotten blood of the many California tribes, and so many others, just names on a blood, today and tomorrow and forever. We and you and we and we roar our love, honor our dead, restore the city of our mothers to her dignity. We march. But where is Sister Mary Boom Boom and the other sisters of, of perpetual indulgence, you ask? But they are here in Lakota, dancing behind the Emperor Norton, strange to Jim and the passel of streakers and pastel sneakers. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, rather appropriately, we will go next to a poem by Jack Hirschman in honor of him and re read by Christina Brown. Um, how can Jack be gone? Yes. How can he be gone? This is the home arcane. It was written by Jack long before Occupy and long before Game of Thrones. Four parts. One, winter has come in doorways, in alleys, at the top of church steps, under cardboard, under rag blankets, or if lucky, in plastic sacks. After another day of humiliation, Sleeping, freezing, isolated, divided, penniless, jobless, wheezing, dirty, skin wrapped around cold bones. That's us. That's us in the USA. Hard concrete, cold pinnacle. Wear fire, wear drink. Damned stiffs in a drawer soon if, and who cares? Shutters so familiar to us, shivers so intimate, our hands finally closed and clench after another day, panhandling, tongues hanging out. Dogs ate more today, are curled at the feet of beds, can belch, have hospitals they can be taken to. They'll come out of houses and sniff us dead one day. Pieces of shit lying scattered here in an American city, renowned for its food and culture. Two. The concrete is our sweat hardened, the bridge our vampirized blood, the downtown tenderline and Broadway lights, our corpuscles transformed into ads, 
our pulse beat, the sound, ting, ting, and ting, of coins piling up on counters, in phone booths, BART machines, ting, ting, and ting, in parking meters, pinball contraptions, public laboratories, toll booths, our skin converted into dollar bills, plastic cards, banknotes, lampshades for executive offices, newspapers, toilet paper, our heart, the bloody organ the state gobbles like a geek in a shy sideshow that's become a national circus of the damned. Wait, excuse me. Oh, murderous system of munitions and inhuman rights that has plundered our pockets and dignity. Oh, enterprise of crime that calls us criminals. Terrorism that cries we are fearful. Greed that evicts us from places we ourselves have built. Miserable warmongering that sentences us to misery and public exposure as public nuisances to keep a filthy republic clean. This time, we shall not be disappeared in inner city, getty, burial, or morgue. This time, our cries are growing into battalions of united cries. Three, we want the empty offices collecting dust. We want the movie houses from midnight till dawn. We want the churches opened 24 gods a day. We built them. They're ours. We want them. No more doorways, garbage pail alleys. No more automobile graveyards, underground sewer slums. We want public housing. No more rat pit tubing, burnt out rubble caves. No more rain soaked dirt in the mouth. Empty dumpster nightmares of avalanches of trash and broken bricks. Screams of women hallucinating at muni entrance gates. No more kids with death rattling teeth under discarded tarp. We want public housing. We, the veterans of your insane wars, workers battered into jobless oblivion, the factory young, fingers crushed into handout on chump change street, the factory old, spat out phlegm from the sick corporate chests of profit. Instead of raped respect, jobs with enough to live on. Instead of exile and eviction in this, our home, our land, homeland once and for all, for all, for one and all, and not just this one-legged cry on a crush on a rainy sidewalk. Jack Hirschman, Presente. Thank you so much. Yes, Jack is here and will always be here, always. And next we have Margaret Randall. Margaret? I don't think she's here. Ooh, I thought she was. I saw her name earlier. Yeah, yeah earlier. But, but she's not, yeah. Oh. She's not not here now. Oh, it's, what a shame. Um, okay. Uh, Bruce Isaacson? Uh, he said he had to leave. Oh, okay. I didn't see that. Okay. Uh, Susu Jeffrey. Yes, I'm here. Yes, please. Relatives, what is it about suicide and the race? Trees live and die and rot in place to nourish the next generation. Trees thrive in community, share nutrients by root taint. Very subtle, no tax write-offs. Even between pines and hardwoods, no prejudice. Consider me in sunshine, you in shade. But if I don't feed you, we both blow down. And if I rake, then I have to fertilize the make work economy. Mother trees, come on and mother trees, exporters of oxygen, Slurpers of rain bombs, singers in wind. Thank you so much. And next we have Elliot Katz. I have not seen him. Elliot. Oh, 
Okay. Then we shall move on to Mark Lipman, who was here. I hope he's still here. Hi, yes, here I am. <laughs> Good. Good to see you all. <laughs> Fantastic job today, everyone. There's a poem I didn't write about train derailments and banks collapsing, tumbling over like a bridge with rusted pylons that fell right into our drinking water because I didn't know whether I should call it he or she. There's a poem I didn't write about world peace, about the chance we had when the walls of an apartheid state came down because it never did. It just went up higher as we marched in the streets for more missile sales for peace. There's a poem I didn't write about another mass shooting, encouraged by politicians blaming the uterus for the collapse of civilization while we cheered on drone strikes as a kinder, gentler way to steal the world's resources. There's a poem I didn't write about a dog gnawing on a child's arm while the cop kept repeating, stop resisting for the cameras as I came to realize that cats are better for the simple fact that they never worked for the police. There's a poem I didn't write for an honest politician because looking left and right, I just couldn't find one. Whether the excuse was told through willful ignorance or an outright lie, in the end, it made no difference. The poor still died on the streets. There's a poem I didn't write about the day we finally woke up and realized that other poor people, regardless of where they were born, are not our enemies. That the billionaires and their cronies were the only ones that felt our rage. I didn't write that poem, but I tell you, my pen is ready. Thank you so much. We all need our pens ready. Uh, next, we have Ziggy Lowenberg, if she's here. Ziggy. And is Elizabeth Marino here? Right here. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Jen. Raid. On vacation in Mexico, sleepy oceanfront town, chiles and brine, white walls, dusty floors, a covered market, a blast of light, three men charging, searching and firing, Green and black turtlenecks pulled up. I drop down into the Elko's crevice. Wall meets floor. A glimpse of a mean white face. My eyes drop as he glances past me. Three bloodless bodies left behind. Through the door, left open. See their white van speed away. They did not find you. You were not there. I tell no one of that face. The police have found no suspects. The police have found no suspects. Back in our room, it is time to go. Now I turn and wake, tightly wrapped in your living arms, the cat nuzzling my nose. Raid, Elizabeth Marino. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that is the end of my list, unless Margaret Randall or Elliot Fats or Ziggy Lohenberg 
Anyway. But thank you all so much, and we will turn it on to Christina now. Thank you, Barbara. Um, our first poet is, or my first poet is, I should say, Angel Martinez. Uh, yes, thank you, everybody. Happy and honored to be here, and always great to remember Jack and many others we've lost. Peace sign. Peace sign. Is it something that you sign with your hands or make with your hands? It is both and it is more. When you write poetry and songs dedicated to a better world, while showing the road to it. It is written when a mother takes care of a child, many children. As we recall resemblance, remembrance of motherhood, it is when you go out to save earth and save life on it, by a way. A movement saying, we can build, we can plant the gardens, we can build the farms. We can run trains that carry food to those who are hungry. When we say peace sign, we talk about ending the poverty that prevents peace. For as long as one person's hungry or without a home or crying out for freedom, we still have the long road to make that peace possible. Thank you, Angel. Our next poet is Tommy Avakoli Mecca. Tommy, are you here? Yes, yes, I'm here. Um, I, I want to dedicate my poem to my grandparents, Cosimo and Santa Avicoli and Nicola and Maria Antonia Mecca. I stand with immigrants. I stand with immigrants, border crossers, asylum seekers. I stand with refugees, dreamers, day laborers. I stand with my Southern Italian grandparents who were drawn to the lamp by the golden door. I stand with the Statue of Liberty and her promise to the huddled masses. I stand with an America that welcomes the homeless, tempest-tossed, not an America that puts children and babies in cages and tears families apart, or flies asylum seekers to northern cities in a game of gotcha. I stand with the America of Emma Lazarus, not the America of Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump or the MAGA masses. I stand with an America that remembers what it stands for. Thank you. Thank you. Our next poet is Tarita McKell. Tarita? Okay. Uh, all righty. Here I am. Oh, what is going on? There it is. Um, playing it cool. Play it cool and dig all jive of class and race and what feds say like church and state has two separate gates, though presidents swear in on the Bible that states you're born broken, babe. So say you're in the world, but not of it. Play it cool and dig all jive and beg forgiveness for being alive, except all costs to live as contempt for existence. Blame Eve and Cain for hell, and earth dominion 
Illusion of inclusion sustains subtle bruising. Totalitarian trust secures delusions. Justice and just ice judges the scheme. Degenerates, telomeres, nerves, genes. Alternative facts redefine. First rule of war, confuse the mind. You know, play it cool and dig all jive. Watch American hegemony fail. Humanity's growth grow frail. Pawn nature's law in exchange for man's dogma. Schizophrenic bipolar tyrannies kill with impunity. Interrupt left right brain response ability. Bank on stocks, multi trillion pharma industries. Entertain affliction, fear, and addiction. Police, priests, partner with dis ease. Promise the rapture will offer eternal peace in the afterlife when you die on your knees heroically. You know, play it cool and dig all jive, ignoring strange fruit on poplar trees, smell more funerals than weddings, children disappearances, sex trafficking, pornography, houselessness, organ and attention harvesting, genocide, G5, GMOs, gain of function viruses, AI jabs yeah. with lipid yeah. nanos, mRNA plastics, crafts, spermicides, cellular toxins, war without end, ride, suicides, prevention and assistance, websites. Is culture canceling? Why play it cool and dig all this jive? Thank you, Torita. Um, I see that Elliot Katz is here. Elliot, are you ready to read? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I, I don't know if my camera is working, but I'm here. And you can hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm going to read. Okay, so my poem is called Liberation Recalled Number 25. In the midst of early American modernism, 35,000 workers were killed and over 700,000 injured in 1914's industrial accidents. That year, more than 100 socialists elected local office by pure products of Oklahoma. The Brooklyn Eagle fired Helen Keller after she self-declared socialist, pointing out her physical limitations as if deafness and blindness entered her life as bodily defense against ideological transformation. In 1919, Seattle workers sustained a citywide strike nonviolently, about which Anis wrote in Labor's paper, the businessmen don't understand that sort of weapon. It is your smile that is upsetting their reliance on artillery brother. Not many read Anise's poems anymore, and Seattle, now renowned for grunge rock and coffee shops. In 1924, KKK Knights of Abhorrent Cloth massed America with over 4.5 million white hoods. In 1932, the Bonus Army came to D.C. imploring early Depression-era payment of World War I bonuses already pledged. 20,000 vets were smacked back by MacArthur, Eisenhower, and Patton, the best military minds the U.S. could muster against its own. Opposing the most elegant thuggery big business could buy, 1.5 million U.S. unionists nonetheless went on strike in 1934. Since then, wars have been fought wars have been stopped. MLK's birthday declared a holiday, his radical democratic legacy quietly ignored. Developing world materials and misery prop up the Western wardrobe, yet laughter and music become more internationalized than ever. Despair, desire, sorrow, hope, 
old stories witnessed in new ways. What is history, if not a bit of wishful thinking? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Elliot. Our next poet is Karen Milander Magoon. Thank you. Um, beautiful evening, beautiful. Human longing. There is no metaphor for human. Karen, you're fading. We oh, okay. I'm. Is this this better? Yes. All right. Human longing. There is no metaphor for human. though clouds may seem to touch the sky, rivers pound inexorably, trees devour carbon dioxide, greedily discarded, giving oxygen. Yet even as the tides obey, sun hours face the sun, rain pour down fill in our lakes and seas, distilled again into soft, tinging into our steel gray skies, yet agents of seasons, cyclical mechanics of nation, vent our purpose, neither yearn to whole cup, just galaxies spin preordained in motions. They do not weep or newborn planets disappear in black holes. This shadow, absent lullabies, even within the time, there is no metaphor for that could suffice in all the universe its secrets. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Our next reader is Sarah Minifi. Hi. Uh, sorry, my my new computer doesn't have a camera. So anyway, uh, you can hear me anyway. This is uh, titled here. It's for Khalif Brown. Here in God's country, they can arrest you for smiling and you be dead before they get you to jail, he told his friend. But depend on the universe that gave you your wits to get you to where you need to be. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Our next poet is Ed Mikey. Ed? Our next poet is Jerry Pendergast. Our next poet is Gregory Pond. Thank you. New ism. When right nor left quite represent people's concerns or primary interests. And all we ever get is left right back where we began. Then we need better decisions. We need a brand new brand. We need a brand new ism. We need another other to free us from the prison that incarcerates us all. We need a social call, perhaps a call for socialism or some sort of government which will lift us if we fall too far into the schism that has always existed between the who is and the who isn't. One that throws a comforter over those with less than, feeds the haven't eaten, beds that can't find sleep, 
and cares for the who needs healing. A commune, a communal, maybe a communistic tribunal, a mass community gathering, no slow or middle of the road to fascism, but a worldwide revolution, a true planetarianism toward a new humanitarianism, united to combat fear and greed, whose primary mission is to house and feed, to spread no hatred or disease, and create a planet where we all will be global promoters of love and peace. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Our next poet is Joanna Scandefio. Scandefio? Johanna? On a Monday afternoon, in front of the Russian embassy, a cyclist saw a man playing his cello. He stopped the way a farmer stops in the middle of his day to listen to light rain the way a doctor takes a pulse, the way a musician poses bow in one hand and with the other steadies his instrument. When the cyclist asks the musician, are you Yo-Yo Ma? He replied, yes, everyone has to do something. Thank you. Thank you, Johanna. Our next poet is Doreen Stock. Can you hear, see me? Yes. By the road to the contagious hospital after William Carlos Williams, or rather across the road from it, amid these hills of the eternal variety, a community of oaks pins down the grassy slopes, lest they drift upward to become one with their puffy overlords hanging down, shadowing them, gently moving across their faces. What if it's the oaks who send us from their rooty network Consolation, that silence heard in our white corridors of grief, despair, fear, pain. What if it's consolation that heals? All who breathe in the contagious hospital, never suspecting that the forms they see out the window are breathing with them, singing with them, in the silent language of all that is. And all along the road, the upstanding twiggy stuff of bushes and small trees with dead brown leaves under them, leafless vines. What if they are communicating among the x-rays, the tubes of blood, the yards of gauze and pounds of plaster, saying simply, stand up. You can do it to the frail, the weighted, the suddenly dispossessed. On the road to the contagious hospital today, I could see once more my own father in his last moment, breath leaving, light leaving his eyes, his profile relaxing against the trees, the hills, the grass, in the dignity of his exit among them. And what if the eyes seeking clouds find them filled with the gentle rain of tears that can ease what's broken, flown, undone? Thank you, Doreen. Our next poet is Matthew uh, Tulibe. Um, he's going to be read in translation by Barbara. Oh, it's it's not a 
translation. It's oh, par pardon me. Pardon no, 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 it's fine. He just asked me to read it because he was uh, not able to come today. Outside in the radiance, outside in the radiance of sunrise, doves sitting on the satin day of your longing, singing to dawn of spring, joy and peace embrace essence of being. Trumpets roar, sun gets behind macabre clouds, big birds with scarlet beaks and claws, sanguine flooding deadly heavy metals enter the scene of surprise, lost lives replaced by bouquets of sobs. Scarifying crystalline tears, doves fly away sadly, window panes masked misty, to blind the truth of fatal tragedy. You fall frozen inside the four walls of your sweet dreams and memories. Thank you, Barbara. Our next poet is Raymond Nat Turner. Our next poet is David Arrow. Ah, Nat, you're here. Nat? Raymond? Our next poet is David Volpendesta. Um, Barbara uh, will be reading his piece. Yes. <clears throat> David is my longtime partner. Cannot be here. Forbidden psalm to a world with a broken spine. To the poor. When the wealthy look into the eyes of a crystal ball, they see themselves making gigantic profits off climate change. A flash of lightning in a broken jar is the earth falling from the sky with all the planets in the universe. For some, Life is luxury, liquor, and pills, not to mention mountains of money to buy Rolls Royces while their chauffeurs are paid minimum wage and dress in secondhand clothes, while their bosses buy fancy gold watches, diamond rings, stocks and bonds, and $10,000 suits. That is being successful. That is why they were born. Imperialism is the suicide of the soul, just like heroin, or better yet, fentanyl, because it goes more quickly to outer space where very few are, will be coming down. When rich people think of money before they fall asleep at night, they don't think of starving children who are begging for penny candy. The snobby millionaires tell those kids to get a job and a change of clothes and tell their parents to quit living off welfare. To the imperialist class, your heart is just a commodity, just more flesh in a nuclear war. Dominate the body, hunt down the soul. This is the United States where everything has a negotiable price. There will come a day, a time, when the eagle will chase the fox up and down the valley and the squirrel will find an acorn in the tallest tree and children will teach adults about the wonders of the world and the glories of light. They will dance on the boundless air because children will find reality behind the infinite illusions. Yes, children will begin to heal a fractured world. Thank you, Barbara. I'm now going to see if some poets who were uh, uh, not present earlier are present now. Um, Lynn Barnes, are you still here? I know you had, had come, but perhaps you've gone again. Um, Lynn? Um, uh, Moro Fortissimo? Okay, in that case, D.A. Rorschach Wilson. 
and last, Eric, oh, excuse me, Kathy Powers, are you here? Kathy? She was here earlier. She was here, yeah. But gone now, unfortunately. Um, Eric, Alan? I'm here, I'm here. Oh, yay. Um, okay, <laughs> Kathy Powers. I just couldn't get to my button quickly. So many words. They come to most forums with so many words, codified with hope imitations, empty ruling class promises. Mass media blasts, ghost messages in color, insincere content, meaningless, bank vacant, robotized smiles. The ruling class steals human dreams, ignores real pleas from common angst, talks over essential needs, shuts down the crisis from silent, the cries from silent voices. So many words, fake understanding of obligations, houseless, hungry, sick, have no words, not even letters. Thank you, Kathy. I would now like to ask, is there any poet here who has not been asked to read? Okay. I think, I think Nellie Wong, Wong is here. Uh, Nellie? Um, we would be delighted to have you read. Uh, Nellie? She needs to unmute. Nellie. Nellie, uh, please unmute. Barbara, you need to turn your volume up. Nellie, Nellie, you need to unmute. Are you sure Nellie's here? I don't see her on my screen. I don't see it's her. Under iPhone. It's I, under I, I see her, but she's muted. Yes, it's iPhone 4. Nelly. There we go. Hello. <laughs> Yay. Thank, yeah. thank you. Hi. Nelly. Sorry about that. I'm on my phone. I'm not too smart. Okay. There we go. Blue. Blue mind day. Masking, laughing with the wind. No herons in sight. Blue of sky. Growth of sticky monkey flowers along the path. Houses across the water, mother birds with chicks, mewing of gulls, seabirds, ships in wait, patience tested, cargo of automobile and computer parts, toys, steel eye beams, blue marble centers the view, tomorrow's herons, the air of summer. Songs, story, and glass, surrounding poems, and we sing. Thank you. Thank you, Nellie. Nellie is our last reader. Uh, and, I'd like to begin my conclusion. Eric Hello. Eric, Eric Hello. is here. Yep. Yeah, I'm I, supposed to be last. Sorry. Oh, Eric. Um, Eric, we are uh, happy to have you read. Um, Eric Allen Yankee. Okay, this is Brick Walls. I've seen so many young people sitting against a brick wall, backpacks with holes, 
shoes with soles flopping and desperate eyes searching. No home in sight. Only wordless passerby. Passengers on the train to a world without understanding. Just more brick walls and more young people to blend in with the bricks. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Are there any poets remaining who have not read? Rorschach, did you make it? No. Okay. So, so I'd like to um, conclude by thanking my fellow editors, John, Karen, and Barbara for making this possible. I would like to thank all of you. Um, I'm going to keep it very short because it's the early hours of the morning for some of our readers. I'd like to thank you for contributing to Healing a Fractured World. I'd like to thank you for listening, reading, and for raising spirits. As we face growing fascism in the United States and the world, our power is in our connections to each other, with each other, everywhere, all over the world. Thank you for helping to build and strengthen all of our bonds for each other. Thank you.